Right. Brilliant, guys. So um, lots of, I guess, uh, fundamentals to go through. And I, I, I do want to um, just cover a few things. Um, if anyone's got any questions, definitely remind me uh, about those questions. But um, but I do want to just, uh, I, I guess, uh, get through and kind of maybe just cut through the noise and reinforce uh, some concepts in this uh, in this um, uh this week's webinar. So one of the things I guess that should, if you don't know already, or maybe should be reminded is that um, not all risk events are the same, right? So at the moment, currently, we are, um, from a risk off perspective, we all, all obviously all understand that there's, um, you know, the uh, Russia invasion of the Ukraine. And um, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, what may happen, what, you know, may not happen, you know, the fact is nobody knows, right? Everybody is is pretty much, you know, speculating. But in trading in a risk-off environment and when there are lots of risk-off sentiment, it can be quite tricky and challenging, confusing. A lot of, you know, traders are like, well, what should I do, right? What should I, should I, should I stay in the market? Should I, you know, what pair should I trade, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, you know, me personally, again, just to reiterate this, I've gone over this many times but personally you know i will still continue to buy risk off uh sorry risk on currencies even in a risk off scenario because for for, for several reasons and um and, and one you know real reason being is that you you always get pullbacks regardless right you, you will always get pullbacks in a risk on scenario or a risk off scenario, right? Of course, you know, the market and price can't move higher, you know, or lower forever. There's always going to be a pause at some point. Again, I, I get it. Prices can drop for a very long time, right? They can do. And so there's, there are things that we have to do to mitigate, you know, those risks. Yeah, for example, just risking less, um, you know, uh, position sizes, etc., and really just taking the, the the A1 setups. But there's also a difference as well. What I wanted to move on to really is, is cover is there is a difference um, in risk um, events that we must be aware of. You can't treat every single risk event with the same um you know, broad strokes, basically. You can't just say, all right, well, it's risk off, so this is what should happen. No, that's not the way it works. Every risk event is different. And you need to be aware, I guess, and no one knows, no one's got a crystal ball, but of the resolution timelines, right? Or potential timelines or possible timelines, right? Um, and each one is different. They are, they, they all look similar, but they are different, right? So as an example, as an example, right? We, today we've got, and, and at this point in time, you know, 2022, you know, 1st of March, oh, no, it's the 2nd of March today. Is the 2nd of March today? Uh, got my dates all wrong, one second. Yeah. Um, but at this point in time where, where, you know, we've got the uh, Ukraine war, right? And Russia, um, doing what they're doing now again nobody knows no one knows when that may end okay you know they're, they're a speculation and this is from you know mufg and they say the reality is now the reality now is for global investors to consider two basic scenarios from here a conflict that is contained within the borders of the ukraine uh, between russia and ukraine or a more significant conflict that draws nato or other countries bordering Russia. While we cannot dismiss completely the risk of the conflict drawing in NATO uh, or other uh, countries in the region, we currently assume this will be contained to Russia and, uh, sorry, contained to Russia, Ukraine in the Ukraine, yeah? Now, this is where the timeline horizon comes in, right? So they've already done their assessment and, and, and how, what, what impact it's going to, is it going to spread or is it going to be contained, yeah? Contained within Ukraine. If so, right, if it is contained within Ukraine, then there are two sub-scenarios, yeah? A brief conflict or one that is long drawn out, yeah? That's pretty much, you know, what we need to understand with every single risk event that happens. Now, of course, nobody knows of war, but let's say, for example, let's look at elections, right? Elections generally have a deadline, yeah? So 
the deadline is pretty much you'll know by then or in lead up who is, you know, which party is probably leading. Of course, there are obviously going to be surprises or there can be surprises as to, you know, what the outcome of those elections are. But generally, you have, you know, a, a timeline. With some risk events, you do some risk events, you don't. So you have to treat every risk event, yeah, differently. Some may be, you know, this, this might be a brief conflict or one that is long drawn out. If it starts to look like it's a brief conflict, and again, no one knows, right, then you, uh, you know, adjust accordingly, right? If it looks like things are escalating even more, and let's say, for example, surrounding countries start to get involved and, you know, NATO get involved, then it would probably start to look like a more drawn out, a, a, a longer um, risk off event, um, and the, you know, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, I guess the resolution is probably being kicked further and further down the road, right? So there, is, there are, you, you have to understand this factor. You can't just blindly, there's a bit more in-depth analysis that needs to be taken when looking at um, every single risk of event. Yeah, because if you if you don't and you're just saying, well, I'm if the war is on and I'm going to, you know, try to start trading the war, you could be caught offside. Yeah, you could be caught severely offside. So just and also as well, I, I guess one of the things that you that I guess to cut kind of cut through the noise as well is is try to focus on what the facts are. Um, and in and even in that, there's obviously lots of facts, right? Which facts do you focus on? Me personally, I try not to speculate on, you know, what is going to happen in the future. All I'm looking for is clues as to whether things are getting better or worse. Yeah. So there was a situation, I think it was yesterday or the day before, where I think it might have been yesterday, where I was watching the news. And on one hand, they were talking about, I think it might have been yesterday, where they, you know, the Ukraine and, um, the Ukraine and you know Russia um, had literally had talks, right? They were having talks. Was that yesterday, by the way, guys? Was that yesterday or was it the day before? Sometimes I'm getting my days all mixed up. Um, where they sat down at the table, but at the same time, yeah, there was you know bombings that were going on and, and, and attacks that were going on, right? So it was it was yeah yesterday. I, I think it was pretty was yesterday and potentially today too, right? So there were constant talks going on yesterday morning. It, well, I'm, I'm, I knew it was yesterday morning. Right. So there were talks going on, but the news was still reporting, you know, like seeing, you know, explosions and, you know, and things like that going on. Now, what do you focus on in that scenario? Literally within the space of like 10 minutes, you know, it was like one report was saying same channel and everything. One report was saying they're coming together. They're sitting down at the table. There are talks going on. Yeah. The next the, the, literally the next, you know, segment of it was, um, you know, uh, this is a, they were showing a building and then the building got blown up and da, 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 right? And I get the emotional reaction to it. But what I'm focusing on is the actual resolution, the fact that there are talks. That's what is important, yeah? And I'm not saying that, and I'm talking about important for our trades, right? I'm not, and our, and our decision-making. I'm not talking, I'm not saying that it's not important that, you know, people aren't dying because there are real people dying. It's a very, very sad, horrible, frightening situation for anybody to be in. But if you're trading these things, yeah, that the market is, is going to react to whether there is a resolution. And this is why my default position is always, resolution resolution is it coming sooner or is it is it coming later yeah we can go back to for example the virus pandemic and, and people always ask the question and i even i got caught out on this one myself right so so in 2020 when you had for example the aussie yen right aussie yen yeah you know for for about two three weeks you saw a really a, a massive drop yeah in the aussie yen then for pretty much the rest of the year you saw the Aussie yen do this. And the reason why the trade idea wasn't, it wasn't that the market was ignoring risk off because, you know, the, the, there was no buy, you know, this was, I think maybe March, April, I think it must have, uh, yeah, it must have um, started to reverse. Yeah. Around April times. Um, and even when we were going into July, August, September, October, the idea 
the, the trade idea, the reason why the market was pricing in a, um, I guess, buying the Australian dollar, because Austra- the Australian economy and the Australian government were the best out of the worst, right? They were handling the, 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 the virus the best. So they were going to be close to recovery, right? They were going to be the ones that were going to recover the quickest, right? So the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? The timeline, the market focuses on the timelines to resolutions, yeah? The resolution timeline. So that's really what you want to focus on. I get it. I know that, you know, you're seeing, if you're on social media, you're seeing, you know, uh, bombs and people dying and blood and people literally begging and pleading with the Russian government to stop bombing. I get it, the emotional response to that. But that is not what is going to influence yeah, your trade. What is going to influence your trade and your trading decisions is where is the re- when is the resolution coming? Is it likely to be sooner rather than later? Or are they sit are Russia refusing to sit at the table? You know, are Ukraine refusing to sit at the table? You know what I mean? And there's no there's no negotiation in sight. When you start seeing that, that's when you start to see more risk off start to come into play. Yeah. And it could be again a long one that is uh, you know, drawn out. Yeah. Does everyone understand that? And that's the same thing. You apply that logic to pretty much every single scenario, right? When when the when the when the when the, um, when the vaccine, when there was a vaccine for 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 coronavirus, right? When when I think it was uh, Pfizer and Moderna, you know, were, were releasing their um, a vaccine doesn't mean that they had a cure, but the fact that the market took that as again light at the end of the tunnel. What did you see? People were still dying of of of, of COVID, right? We were heading into our you know the first winter after you know or the first winter of of COVID. Do you know what I mean? But yet the market was still going higher. So it's all about light at the end of the tunnel, the resolution. Yeah, that's how to play, and I hope that does you know not necessarily clear things up because it's never necessarily, you know, 100% clear, but as, as, as far as introducing you to a kind of perspective on how I kind of look at um, and how I've come to trade risk off events, right. And risk off scenarios. Yeah. Also as well, you will have a situation where, and situations where for any of you who, um, you know, understand in the, uh, of, um, of buying or, or purchasing the market maker course, you understand that there has to be liquidity has to be provided. So you just, just, just by default, you will have, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, pullbacks. That's the reason why, because the market makers have to provide, you know, that liquidity uh, for, for institutions. So, um, so yeah. So with that being said, understand the resolution timelines resolution timelines the next um thing i want to talk about right and this is going to get you guys interacting and interactive i guess is understanding the interest rate inflation and gdp uh, balance that central bankers have to consider yeah so we tend to put ourselves or you know and i used to do this as well is, is put ourselves in a situation where it's like you're thinking about what they would do. And what you really want to do, if you understand the rules to the game, is understand what would I do if I was a central banker? Yeah, if I was a central banker in this scenario, what would I do or have to do with monetary policy? Yeah, because if you understand what you would do, then you're likely to understand what they are likely to do. I'm not saying that you're going to be 100 percent right all the time, but you're more often than not going to be on the right path. Yeah. So at the moment, you know, Russia invasion divides traders on and that's the word stagflation. Right. Can anyone tell me what stagflation means? If you want to turn your mic on or type it in, whatever's easiest. Stagflation. What is stagflation? Yes. Hello. Hello, Alexandros. Alexandros. Yes. How are you doing? Yes, it's when we um, yeah, in our inflation has reached way above its levels, mm-hmm. but we are also in a um, state where um, our GDP cannot reach um, the potential. Um, it's good. It's a lower GDP. We have we have a one lower GDP. Then we have a next quarterly lower GDP. Mm-hmm. Unemployment also is very bad. Mm-hmm. Is going to, to a lower uh, unemployment is going higher. Mm-hmm. So more people have been unemployed, um, which means that the um, the bank is, is a very difficult position. They don't know what to do. Are the rise rates 
because due to inflation, but mm-hmm. also if they're in trouble because if they do rise rates, it's going to push more hard onto the um, um, onto the people and, and the companies, and they do, and it won't be easy for the economy to um, adjust to the new change. Right. Ex- excellent. And that's pretty spot on, right? You're pretty much spot on, right? And uh, Ken says high inflation, low GDP. Gary says same thing, uh, shrinking GDP and high inflation. Absolutely. Yeah. And so what we have to do is understand the dilemma of the bank. Yeah. And the, or, or, or not even the dilemma of the bank. I'm going to put it as the dilemma that you have, right? Because you are a central banker, right? Your task is to see the economy yeah, through this crisis, yeah? Now, the problem, if you have high inflation, yeah, high inflation meaning you've got a 2% target, yeah, We're gonna. By the way, I'm, I'm. I'm gonna walk through. I know. I know you guys know this, but just for anyone who maybe might be unsure about the dilemma that the central bankers actually have at the moment. Yeah, and I know um, Alexandros has, has, has explained it, but we're gonna. We're, we're really gonna walk this through. Yeah. So inflation, right, is high, right? Is above the two percent target. So what do the central bankers? typically have to do and and by the way it's trending away yeah so it's going higher it's trending away from their two percent target yeah so what do central bankers typically have to do in order to and i want everybody to to interact welcome f green fidel how you doing um i want everybody to to interact yeah um yep yeah. okay everyone's doing hike 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 excellent right so they typically have to um to to high crates right now if you high crates yeah yeah if 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 you're if you're hiking rates you have to be aware of you know gross domestic product gdp now what do we need to see from gdp in order to high crates Smith, Ken Smith says rising, growth up. Yep, <laughs> however you describe it, right? Exactly. It's got to be. It's got to be growing. Yeah, got to see growing. Right. Excellent. In order to high crates. In order to high crates. Right. So rates. Rates is up. No. Excellent. All the boxes are ticked. Now. If we high crates, yeah, and we continue to high crates, what is the effect of too high rates or if rates go too high on the economy? What, what could the possible effects of hiking interest rates too much have on the economy? Mm-hmm. Alexandra says higher borrowing. Ken says, hurts economy, higher paycheck rates. Uh, makes the currency too expensive. Some good answers. Anyone else? Marianne, Justin, Fidel? Anyone else? Anyone else? I want everyone to get this. I don't know, maybe some people might be at work or listening or whatever it is. So I'll, I'll again... It's all of those things, right? So if rates are too high, it generally can hurt an economy because of borrowing and lending costs, right? So from the perspective of, you know, just just think again, just think about ourselves right now. Imagine if interest rates were at, let's say, for example, just, just do an extreme number. Let's say, for example, interest rates are currently at 10, no, let's do 20%, right? If interest rates are at 20%, how does that affect you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your and your spending habits. <laughs> Ken says, yikes. <laughs> right. But but just let, let's imagine the extreme, right? Because we have to imagine the extreme in order to understand the, the, the issue here or the potential issue. Right. 
You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean that's to, that's more to do with inflation, right? You know what I mean? Nine nine dollar loaf of bread, but from from a from a from a if interest rates if interest rates right now are at twenty percent, yeah. If you're a mortgage owner, right? If you've got a mortgage on your property, or if you invest in properties, multiple properties, what is that gonna do? That they exactly and people know this, right? So I'll, I'll spell it out, right? It's it, 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 the cost of borrowing increases, it literally hurts businesses. It hurts business because everything is expensive. Bankruptcy, um, uh, Justin says, exactly, it will cause, it eventually will cause that because people can't afford to pay back 20% interest rate, right? From a, from a lending, from a borrowing perspective, imagine you have to borrow, you know, you needed to grow as a business, yeah? And you're like, okay, I need to, I need to borrow as a business and we need to expand. Because if we don't expand, then we're probably not going to survive the next you know, year or two. All right, I want to go and borrow some money. And the bank tells you, well, yeah, you can take out a loan, but it's going to be 20%. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, how do how does a, an economy survive, right? How does an economy survive? So if you hike rates too much, yeah, if interest rates are too high, it hurts an economy. And Gary also said as well, which is important to remember, is that it... it obviously creates demand for an economy or for the sorry for the country yeah for the country's currency i should say and if there is if if the currency is too expensive it also makes them less competitive because again if the country of leon and the country of gary and the country of ken and the country of justin yeah are all selling the same products we're all selling the same products or we're all exporting the same product right but Justin's, you know, uh, country is exporting it for cheaper than everybody else. And let's say, for example, my country is the most expensive. Where do you think Gary and um, and and Ken are going to be buying their 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 their, their, their products from? Me or Justin? Justin's the cheap one. I'm the expensive one. Expensive exchange rate. Who's gonna who's who's gonna who's gonna be the one? That's exactly it. You're going to go to Justin. That's exactly it, right? And that's how it works. So then there's, so then what happens is, is that the knock-on effect is I'm going to sell less because Justin is undercutting me. He's getting all the business. I'm not getting much business, which then affects my exports, which then affects my GDP, right? That's that's basically how it goes. Yeah. So, it, so, so making uh, interest, interest rates expensive or too, or, or hike, interest rates too much has the effect or can have the effect in the extreme example, right? And not even necessarily even in the extreme, but, you know, central bankers don't know what number that is, right? They, they, they're constantly trying to balance. So they hike and then they kind of maybe wait and see, or they forecast to see how much, you know, interest rates they can hike. Let's say, for example, in, you know, by the end of this year, can the economy cope with a, you know, a 2% you know, if interest rates are at 2%, can the economy cope with that?